Hello, what's up guys? It's again Dr. Mozam Tivana here and today we are going to talk about what is frequency reuse in the GSM and why it is used. Uh, now when we talk about the frequency spectrum or the frequency band uh, in the GSM, uh, in one of the last few lectures we talked about that for example if an operator has been assigned a frequency of 5 megahertz this means that it has been assigned a frequency of 5 megahertz in the uplink and 5 megahertz in the downlink then this frequency is then further subdivided into uh, channels of 200 kilohertz each in the uplink and the downlink and one such uplink channel of 200 kilohertz and corresponding 200 kilohertz downlink channel actually forms uh, the frequency duplex pair are which is known as the absolute radio frequency channel numbers the more the absolute radio frequency channel numbers an operator has uh, has this means that he has the possibility to accommodate more number of user mobile users now uh, the next question uh, for example if an operator has uh, up, uh, a frequency band of 5 megahertz in the uplink and in the downlink then simply we can divide this bandwidth of 5 megahertz by 200 kilohertz and we get 25 ARFCMs. this means that this particular operator or the mobile company has uh, uh, has 25 ARFCNs to accommodate this user now the next question that comes into our mind is that how that operator is going to use these ARFCNs or this frequency spectrum. Now the most logical conclusion that comes to in, uh, into our mind is that we, uh, we use all these 25 ARFCNs in all the cells that we have to have the maximum capacity or to accommodate the maximum number of subscribers. For example, we could use all these 25 ARFCNs in this cell, 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 in this cell. In this cell. And in the red you see the base stations and in the blue you have a mobile station. Now, uh, now what happens is that this mobile station will receive the power S from its own BTS which is the useful signal that is get, it is getting. But on the other hand uh, the neighboring cells are producing interference I for this uh, mobile station. So we have a signal to interference ratio uh, S over I. Now better S over uh, better is this signal to interference ratio this means that the useful signal or S is more than the interference. Uh, which is uh, and or communication can uh, can work fine but if the signal to inter interference is more then signal to interference ratio will degrade and in that case what will happen that there can be errors in the communication and in this case when we are using all the frequencies in each of the cells it is most likely that our signal to interference ratio will be poor but what the standard of GSM uh, wants or uh, uh, requires is that we must have the signal to interference ratio of at least 12 dB this means if a cell is at the cell edge and it is receiving the power S and its interference uh, it is received from the neighboring cells is I then signal to interference ratio must not fall uh, below 12 dB or otherwise the quality of communication or quality of wires will degrade. So uh, and it is most likely in this scenario that this would happen. Now how to overcome this problem? This problem can be overcome by using the phenomenon uh, what we call as the frequency reuse. In the frequency reuse what we do is that we divide all those frequencies which are which is 25 ARFCNs in this case into for example in the first step it's the cluster size of 3 into 3 we divide all these 25 ARFCNs into 3 cells like one third of these 25 ARFCNs will go here in this cell one third will go here in the cell shaded black and one third will be go here and this way we have this cluster this first cluster and this cluster will then replicate like we have another cluster here we have another cluster here and we have another cluster here but what you see from this diagram is that the cells which are using the same frequency they are shaded in the same color and we see that the distance for example the cells they are shaded red now the distance between them has increased now the interfering signals because uh, they are uh, the interference frequency or signal 
uh, which is actually propagating from this cell to this cell will have to travel more distance and when it travels more distance its power will be significantly attenuated this means that the interference is being reduced and so the and the signal power if it is the same the signal to interference ratio will increase and uh, it is uh, and it would be possible that we get we achieve this minimum signal to interference ratio requirement of 12 dB to have uh, the noise free uh, or error free communication but uh, there can be some uh, but uh, uh, there can be uh, some other uh, scenarios in which for example uh, the cells are very small they are very close to each other and in that case it is still possible that we have a cluster size of 3 in which we are dividing uh, all these frequencies into three cells so that the adjacent cells adjacent cells don't use the same frequency but still we don't get this signal to interference ratio of minimum signal to interference ratio of 12 dB uh, so in that case what we can do in that case we would further increase the cluster size for example we can ha then have the cluster size of 7 that we will divide all these frequencies into uh, seven cells are the cluster of seven cells and then this cluster of seven cells will replicate across this region of the network and in that case the distance between the cells using the same frequency will increase the further and the interference will reduce further and so the signal to interference ratio will increase and it would be possible to get the signal to interference ratio minimum requirement of signal to interference ratio of 12 dB now what is the trade off that uh, on one hand we are trying to reduce the interference by increasing the cluster size but on the other hand what is happening uh, is that uh, actually the number of available frequencies as we are dividing all frequencies into more number of cells the number of available ARFCNs or the frequencies is being reduced so the number of subscribers that we can accommodate or serve in the cell is reducing so um, it's a compromise like uh, what compromise it is that uh, we have to choose the cluster side size so that we uh, achieve this required minimum signal to interference ratio but if we have a bigger cluster size naturally the cells using the same frequencies will be further apart and the interference will reduce and but uh, and we can achieve this uh, and, uh, achieve this signal to interference ratio but on the other hand what would happen is that as our capacity will decrease as now our frequencies will be subdivided into more number of cells and when on the other hand we use the smaller cluster size in that case we will have more capacity as the frequencies are divided into being subdivided into the less number of cells but on the other hand we can have more interference and uh, it is possible that we may exceed this minimum uh, we, uh, or minimum signal to interference ratio may fall below this level so uh, so we adjust the cluster size such that we have this minimum signal to interference ratio for all our mobile users even at the edge of the uh, cells at uh, where we have the maximum interference as compared to when a mobile station is near to the BTS it is it has less interference so we want this minimum requirement to be met but at the same time we will select that cluster size which will just meet that minimum signal to interference requirement uh, of 12 dB so that we uh, do not necessarily lose the uh, lose the capacity that we can have uh, now uh, and then the next question is that comes into our mind is that how the mobile operators or the mobile companies uh, adjust the cluster size uh, when they are deploying the network now uh, this shape of the cell size is actually just an abstraction in the real world this cell size this cell shape is just of the hexagon is just an abstraction in the real world actually you can have you can have any shape of the cell you can a shape 
of like this one depending upon uh, how many buildings are there how many trees are there how the signal is being reflected or diffracted you can have different shapes now uh, what the mobile companies or mobile operators do is that actually they have the uh, planning softwares and in the radio planning software you take those parameters of that particular region or that area and which best simulates the uh, cell uh, cell shape that is over there and then they adjust the cluster cluster size in such a way that you get the, this minimum signal to interference ratio of 12 db for all its users thank you